Hello everyone. Today we continue with computer system architecture course and our topic is risk pipeline. In the previous videos we discussed parallel processing, pipelining, arithmetic pipeline and the last video was on instruction pipeline. In chapter 8 we discussed the main characteristics of risk architecture and they include large register file, simplicity of instruction set, sub operations can be executed in one clock cycle, fixed length instructions which means that decoding can be made at the same time as the register selection. All these characteristics and others make risk efficient for the use of instruction pipeline. At risk, there are three types of instructions data transfer instructions and these are load and store to transfer data from or into memory and move to transfer data between processor registers data manipulation instructions and these instructions are performed in the processor registers so here there is no need for fetching the effective address. And the third type, the program control instructions. And here we use register values to evaluate the address which is transferred to a register or to the program counter. So in risk, the instruction pipeline can be implemented using two or three segments. The first segment for fetching the operand from memory, execute the instruction in the ALU, arithmetic logic unit, and store the result from the ALU to destination register. To prevent conflicts, the fetch of instruction and the load store operations can use two separate buses with two memory modules. In this case, we'll have one memory module for the instructions, or we call it instruction section, and another for data, data section. Instruction bus and a separate data bus. In this case, we can fetch the instruction and load or store operand at the same time. Next, we have an example of a three-segment instruction pipeline. The instruction cycle can be divided into three sub-operations and implemented in the following three segments. The I segment fetches the instruction from memory. In the A segment, the instruction is decoded and an ALU operation is performed. And the execute unit directs the output to its destination depending on the instruction. The arithmetic logic unit has three functions depending on the instruction. Performing the operation, data manipulation instructions, for example, add, subtract, shift left, shift right, etc. Or evaluate the effective address for the load store. And the third function is to calculate the branch address for program control instructions. The execute segment directs the output to its destination 
depending on the instruction. For example, to a register file in data manipulation instructions or to memory in the case of load store instructions here in the case of data manipulation or branch address to the program counter in the case of program control instructions. Next, delayed load. Consider the four instructions load memory location address by address one into register R1. Next, load memory location address by address two into register R2. Add the contents of register R1 and R2 and place the result in R3 and store the result in R3 into memory location addressed by address 3. Here we have data conflict in line 3. The operand in register 2 is not yet available in the A segment. As you see from the timing diagram, the E segment in clock cycle 4 is in the process of placing the memory data into register R2. And the A segment in clock cycle 4 is using the data from register R2. If we continue in this manner, then the old value of R2 will be added to R1, not the correct value. According to the delayed load approach, it's the task of the compiler to check if the instruction after the load uses the data fetched from memory. Here we have load R2 and R2 is used in the next instruction. In this case, the compiler can add here a useful operation or a no operation instruction. And here we have the pipeline timing with delayed load. As you see, no operation instruction is added here after the load instruction. Delaying the use of the data loaded from memory is referred to as delayed load. And here we have the cost for solving this conflict that in inserting a no operation instruction, we have a waste of one clock cycle. And the compiler can avoid this waste if it can find one useful instruction to be inserted after the load operation. Suppose here, for example, after instruction three, we have the instruction increment R6, then R6 can be placed after the load instruction and before the add operation that uses register R2. The main advantage of using delayed load is that solving the problem of data dependency is the task of the compiler and therefore no need for hardware circuits to check if the register value is valid or not. Next delayed branch. Again, it's performed by the compiler and not by the hardware. The compiler detects the branch instruction and rearranges the code segment by inserting useful instructions that keeps the pipeline operating without interruptions. If the compiler encounters a branch instruction, no operations instructions can be inserted to maintain a continuous flow of the pipeline. Consider, for example, the following instructions load from memory to R1, increment R2, add 3 to R4, subtract R5 from R6, and the branch to X. We can solve the conflict here in two ways. First, by inserting two no operation instructions after the branch instruction. Here we have the two instructions, no operation. Here the branch address X is transferred to the program counter in a clock cycle seven. The instruction at X starts at clock cycle eight here. While according to solution B, by rearranging the instructions, here we can move 
the add subtract operations here after the branch instruction and in this case we do not need to add no operation instructions according to this solution if we can rearrange the instructions program counter is updated to the value of x in clock cycle 5 and the instruction in x starts at clock cycle 6 instead of at clock cycle 8 as in the first solution again here the main advantage of these solutions is that the compiler is used to solve the conflicts and no need for hardware to handle the data or branch conflicts of course there is a cost for that the design of the compiler to solve these problems will be more sophisticated for today that's all thank you